aging has been on the mind for everyone, right? Whether you're a 25, worried about, am I beginning to age? Should I do something? Or you're like a 30, 40 something who says, oh my God, I can just see the signs now in the mirror. Or are you at your 50 and 60 thinking, is it still time? Can I still stimulate my collagen? Is it still time? Can I still be able to reverse something? And it's, or if you're at your 70s and 80s to say, you know what, for me, anti-aging is to just stop the skin which is itching on my legs or to make sure there's some hair left on my head. So let's try and see as much as what I can cover, which may appeal to all age groups. Yeah. So we'll start off by establishing that, yes, you do start aging at 25. But should you panic? Should you do anything about it? Not really. The simplest thing you can start doing probably is Take a check at your lifestyle. If you are, let's say, a smoker, a drinker, a late sleeper, and binge eater and junk eater, these are the five categories who should be very, very, very vigilant and immediately try and see what you can make, do to regularize this. Because from now on, to regenerate your collagen, protect your collagen, keep the water holding onto your skin, ma making your skin look youthful and plump is going to be a challenge. And if you end up abusing, it's going to simply deteriorate faster. Number two will be visit your doctor to start a simple skincare regime. It could simply be a sun protection. Do you know one of the biggest contributors to aging from the outside is sun damage and pollution. So simply getting yourself a right face wash, a right nourishing night cream and a sunscreen could be your start of anti-aging endeavor. Now, what can you do if you are a little further and if you want to say, okay, let me do something a little more. So you could, of course, you have, no matter what age, you have a lot of options. Simply, let me divide the options for you, okay? Let's make that simple now. So you either have an option to start off with saying, I only want skincare. That's your number one option. So which let's call it as just application from the outside at home. Two, you can add supplementation with it, which actually gives you the micronutrients and essential nutrients for the body to handle as you keep changing when you age. So that's your micronutrients and supplementation. Number three will be, I just want to go to the doctor's office and do something which is just application based, which means to say you want to opt for an anti-aging facial, let's say or an oxygen facial which actually helps recover and heal the skin. So various kinds of facials are your choices. You could also add some peels which increase the cell turnover so your collagen is also regenerated and the top dead layer of your skin which as you age actually sticks to your body can be released. Have you seen that as you keep growing older you look darker in shade? That's because the top dead layer along with the clumped melanin which is your pigment giving cell stays on, sticks on to your skin and doesn't come off like how you could actually naturally throw it out as you grow older. So you could opt for some peels. Now this is application based. But fourth, let's say, is energy devices based, which means to say that I'm okay to try and see what the equipments are which can help me. By and large, there are, let's say, four types of equipments which do not penetrate you or touch you physically. They may penetrate through the ray of light that is put on you, but not a ray of energy, but not actually poke you and get in. So let's call them non-invasive energy-based devices. Now, the larger categories, one, of course, is laser. When I say laser, it is hair reduction laser. It is like a Q-switched NDR laser. So all of these are your lasers. It's like an erbium glass laser. Now, this could be addressing your hair, your pigmentation and your skin that is your laser then there is light which is IPL which can also lead to brightening skin collagen stimulation hair removal all that it can do then you have the radio frequency and the HIFU radio frequency generally gives you a heat and that particular heat a particular temperature within your skin leads to collagen regeneration and then you have the HIFU like the ultrasound that's used when you see a baby or you visualize things inside the tummy or various organs of your body but here it is focused it's like there's light which does nothing right now the daylight but if I were to use a lens the same light would focus in and burn my hand that is used HIFU is then used 
focused ultrasound, different depths. When it goes deeper and hits a tissue called SMAS, it lifts the skin. When it is more superficial, it tightens the skin. If I can, in a particular way, hit it on the layer where there is fat, it can also reduce the fat. Now, why would I want to do that? There are portions like this on the face or this on the face that the fat starts to grow more or hang down as we grow older. You want to not just add where the fat is gone, but you also want to flatten where the fat is excess. That is when a HIFU or an RF in a particular way comes in handy. So by and large, this is your energy-based devices. Now, if you say, fine, I want to go a step further, you could use invasive energy-based devices, which can cause skin tightening through collagen stimulation, elastin stimulation, etc. Then you have things which we actually put into your skin through a needle. So skin, hair, body skin, wherever you want, decolletage, hands, we end up injecting into these areas.